SBI just buffed the Great Fire Staff E and it is actually super good now for Corrupted Dungeons. And in this video, I am going to show you my build for it so that you can follow along and get a lot of silver in Stalker Corrupted Dungeons. So let's look at the build uh, one by one first and then I'll explain the skills that you need to use for each item. So the first one is a tier six Great Fire Staff. It is important to go for the tier six Great Fire Staff because you will have the Searing Flame ability unlocked. Now, for those who are new to the Fire Staff, you do need level 85 on the base note. So like right here, it's very easy to actually get level 85 um, in this one, just because the Fire Staff is one of the best for PVE. So you do need to get that Searing Flame ability on your great fire staff which is available for tier six so that is for the main hand the great fire staff you also want to use the hunter hood on the retaliate and the first passive the cleric robe on the everlasting spirit and the first passive as well and any plate shoes whatsoever but i just prefer the guardian boots over any plate shoes because it's really cheap and you have the ability to switch to your giant ability if you need it um, but most of the time, it is going to be on Rejuvenating Sprint and the Toughness pot Passive. For the cape, you do need the Limb Escape for this one because this is a mana-hungry build. I do recommend going for 0.1 Pork Omelette, which is around 20k, but obviously, if you cannot afford 20k for this, you can always go with like a, tier, a flat Pork Omelette. Uh, that should be more than enough, honestly. But if you have the money, and if you are going against like higher tier opponents, 0.1 food is actually going to help you a lot. Uh, for the healing potion, for the pots, and a pocket gigantify potion for your swap. All right, so now let's try to explain the, the build in itself and all of the skills that you need and when you want to use them. It's going to be fairly similar to how the one hand fire staff works, but the biggest difference really is this one, right? The Flame Pillar. The Flame Pillar conjures a Flaming Pillar with a 4 meter radius around the targeted position after 0.8 seconds, dealing 560 damage to all enemies hit. And this is where it got buffed. Hitting at least one enemy reduces the cooldown of the ability by 50%. In the previous patch, this skill actually gets reduced by 5 seconds. So by base, uh, the base cooldown for this is 15 seconds, but as you can see with the 0.1 Park Omelet, I do have a 13.2 second cooldown, which is really, really low already. Now look at this. Focus on the right side here. If I hit at least one enemy, the cooldown basically goes down to 6 seconds. So you can spam this skill every 6 seconds, which is insane for a damage with 560 damage per six seconds is actually insane. Now, if you look at this, I don't really have a lot of specs in this one. I do have 100, or I don't even have 100 on the one hand fire. I have 26 on the great fire and zero on everything else. And I only have 100 on the base note. This is not because I have super high specs, which makes this OP. It's just the base effect of the flame pillar is actually super, super high. Okay, so, so those are the skills. Whenever you are scouting though, these are the skills that you need. The Searing Flame. The Searing Flame, if you don't know already, is a targeted, is a target skill, is a skill shot. The Q3 is a skill shot that has the fourth Furious Flame, which basically if you hit your first three Searing Flame, it gets upgraded to the Furious Flame, which deals more damage, but just a little bit extra cast time. Uh, for your W ability for when you are scouting, I really, really like the Flame Blast because it gives you mobility and gives you high damage as well. 413 after 1.6 seconds. And if it deals, if you target an enemy, it actually deals damage immediately as well. And after four, uh, after 1.6 seconds. Uh, you may want to use the Wall of Flames if you go against melees like Dual Swords and say trinity spears as well to cancel their deflecting spin um i mostly use though if i'm going against a dual sword with tier 5 or less i go q1 w1 and passive 3 
and also swap to a Gigantify potion. And you will see some examples in later in this video. Uh, you can just spam Q1 and W1 and basically have a 6 second cooldown with 560 damage consistently with um, with this build right here along with the third passive which, which increases your cast time or reduces your cast time by 40% for 3 seconds after you cast 4 spell, um, spell casts. Alright, but going back to the Q3 ability, you also want to use the, the fire wave in certain situations like say against a bear against a bear or whoever has like a cultist robe it's very effective to deal significant damage and also at the same time cancel any of the channeling skills for the w5 ability which is the fire artillery i only exclusively use this honestly against bows the normal bows because it guarantees damage and most of the time when bows are super confused and again you are going to see uh, an example of this a little bit later in this video they stand in the puddles with their hunter hood, which is just atrocious, a really bad strategy. But yeah, this is against bows, this is against bears, this is against swords mainly if you want to use Q3, if they have uh, the block ability on their W. And for Q1, usually for everything else. Uh, the only time you usually use uh, Q1 with W1 and third passive is when you go against swords with no block ability on their W. All right, so let's talk about the star of the show, which is the fire, the flame pillar. Again, as I said, reduces the cooldown by 50%. That is the new change for this one. It's so, so powerful against most players because if you could just hit this once, you have an ability that you can use every six seconds and it's insanely high damage it does take time obviously to um to practice but when you do practice it and when you do get the hang of it it's super super easy to uh to use all right for the passive you want to use the furious passive which increases your damage dealt by 10 percent for four seconds every five spell cast so this is how it works you get like a counter on up top right there one two three and this actually affects all skills so all of the skills that you actually use not just your weapon skills it will count it will count up to five percent and gives you that buff gives you that additional buff which is really really good this is a mana hungry build just because this e ability consumes 24 energy and again you can spam this every six seconds if you hit your enemy so this is a very mana hungry build that's why I really like the limb escape for this one. And it just increases your energy, basically restores your 80% 80 of your max energy over 90 seconds when you use a skill and your energy is below 40%. Let's move to the Hunter Hood. The Hunter Hood, pretty typical Corrupted Dungeon um, build here. The Hunter Hood on Retaliate, use the Retaliate for your enemies big damages so that you can actually reflect your dam reflect the damages take less damage actually because you have increased damage resistance and also the balanced mind for extra damage and extra healing plus extra defense as well for your robe the cleric robe is really good with this one again it's fairly similar to how my one hand fire staff build is the cleric roll with everlasting spirit increases your damage by 20 percent and immunes you to damage for three seconds as long as you trigger it properly and you trigger it properly by taking damage after 1.5 seconds um of activating this skill this is actually really good for comboing with your e ability as always cleric robe into an e is always going to be one of the strategies that you are going to use for both the one hand fire staff and the great fire staff and also you are going to use aggression passive in this one for extra damages as well for the boots you are always going to be on rejuvenating sprint and the toughness passive the rejuvenating sprint obviously this increases your movement speed by 80 percent increases your health over time I really like the gigantify or the giant boots because of the swap to giant ability the only time you actually use the giant ability is when your opponent also has the guardian boots and also uses the giant ability. That's like exclusively when you want to use them. All right. For the main one, you get heals 
and swap for Gigantify Potion. You swap the Gigantify Potion when you're going against um, Dual Swords and you're using Q1 Spam against Bows when you're using the Artillery and Q3 against Bears when you're using Q3 W4. Whenever the bear dashes forward, just use Gigantify Potion right away. So you are immune to force movements like their roar. You're not going to be immune to their stuns, but you are going to be immune. To, you're going to be immune to the roar, which is really huge. And obviously, you have their damage is basically cut in half. All right. So for the pork omelet, again, if you can go to point one, if you have the silver to go for point one, point was actually really really good. This one increases your cast speed by 15% and cooldown rate by 12% further improving your cooldown and your flame peeler when you do actually hit it. So that's basically the entire build. It's fairly straightforward. It does take some time for you to practice it. But if you are looking for a new build for Corrupted Dungeons, SBI just provided one with the Great Fire Staff. And if you want to learn more about the one hand fire staff build that I referenced in this video, check the link in the description below. And if you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comment section below as well and enjoy the rest of the video. This is crazy, but here's my number, so call me maybe. Use it. Use your E. Yeah, GG. Oh, one mil? Oh wait, oh, oh my gosh. He looted something good. Oh my gosh, that was one mil. Oh, and I looted something good. Oh my gosh, holy crap. Hey. Boom. Let's go. 700k. GG, sir. In general, will that be considered like... Oh, I just purged myself. I'm dumb. I'm actually dumb. I purged my limb herscape too. I don't think he notices that. I hope he doesn't. Oh, he did not. He did not notice it. I purged my limb for escape too. And there's a hype train. Are we going to execute a hype train here? Oh, wow. What is that? I don't like that at all, actually. Can you stop doing that, maybe? I know I hit him. I actually know I hit him.
What? GG sir. A bit confusing what happened there but Boom! Let's go! Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. It kind of worked, but not really. That cooldown is just insane. That damage, bro. <laughs> GG. There's like no logic to it. GG, sir. Awesome, good loot. GG, sir. Job, right? Oh, he almost died. I almost died to that build. No way. GG, sir. Keeper cape too. Oh. Oh. If I don't play this perfectly, I'm dead. I need to trigger his... GG, sir. 300k. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going to get cheese.
Did you? Oh, no way. Oh my gosh, everything trashed. GG, sir. GG, sir. Oh, the trash rate.